recurrent neural nets. They have been around for they have been around for longer since the 1980s, and they are if you talk with Alexa or Siri or a Google or whatever you talk with with your uh, speech recognition digital device, that's usually goes through recurrent neural nets. What do recurrent neural nets do? Well, they are very good for speech recognition, as in contrast to images, because they take sequential information and then they predict the next thing. Images, you kind of like have to, with convolutional neural net, you have to see the entire picture. Whereas in recurrent neural nets, you basically have a sequence and then you predict the next thing. So let's predict the next thing. We have here, we have our matrix, so that's how we store that information. We have here an A, and after the A comes a B. So usually a matrix you read like this, after the A comes a B, so we come here. Then we have a B, and after the B comes another B. And then we have a B, and after the B, we predict another A. So I recorded that here as well. And after that A comes, oh, another B. So, okay, so that's good, and that goes again, and then after that B comes another B. The AA doesn't seem to happen, like a double A does not, okay, we can already fine tune our prediction. I predict, I dare to predict, based on my training of my neural network, that AA doesn't happen. A, it's just, it's just very unlikely, it's like zero probability that it happens. But uh, what happens next? I have a B, and I don't know what happens. Well, according to what I see here and what I recorded here, after B, there could be an A or there could be another B. That has happened before. And I don't know what will happen next. Well, it would make sense that it would be B, A, right? It would be A, B, B, A, B, B. It would be make sense that the next, but I do not know. So I cannot make a very good prediction of what happens next. And well, that's been a problem we've been struggling with with recurrent neural, recurrent neural nets. And I simplify here a lot. And the solution to that was that we go a little bit more long-term. And these are the famous long, short-term memories. And the big breakthrough here came much later, around the year 2010. So that's also when you started all these speech recognition softwares to come onto the market, all the Alexas and Series and Echoes and Hey Googles and and I don't know what, uh, we started to talk with machines thanks to the long short-term uh, memory. And basically what they came up with is they have a longer memory. So let's don't look at one letter at a time as a prediction, but let look at two letters as a building block. And we already talked about that. If you have more data from the past, you can make better predictions. So if you just record as a condition, bigger data, we can make better predictions. Let's see how that works out here. We have A, B, and after AB, I, we record in our training of our neural net. We train our neural net now. There's a B. Then we have, go one further, BB. Next comes an A. Then we have BA. Next comes a B. And then we have AB again. Oh, yeah, we update this here to two. If this goes too fast, feel free to, to slow it down and, and, and rewind it. Then we have BB again. And yeah, after BB comes A. And now comes BA again. I can make a pretty clear prediction. I like, according to what I saw, all of these never happened according to I was trained, and the neural net can and is trained on something. So it makes predictions of what it's been trained on. And according to what I've seen right now, the next letter should be B, right? Because that's, that's, like, that's what comes after BA. So by having a longer memory, I solved my uncertainty. I make better predictions uh, about the future. And that is the idea. You just feed longer uh, prompts that's a technical term, longer chunks into this neural net. Um, could be a syllabus, could be an entire word, could be an entire sentence, could be an entire book that you feed into it. Uh, but that's basically the idea. So that we make the chunks slowly but surely longer and longer. And if you are here, you can already see, okay, there's A, B, 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 A, A, A B, A, B, A, B, 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 A, and then probably B, A, B. So you see, it's always A, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B, basically. So that's how I, how I set it up. And so the longer the prompt, the said, repeat myself as a technical term, the longer uh, the prediction. So the better the prediction, because the more stable the ground you're on and you can better sort things to like, okay, no, that's if that is the condition, then, if, then, if, then, that's how algorithms work. Now, we never have complete certainty. 
It, it usually is not deterministic like in these toy models that I come up with here. In, in theoretical computer science, we do that and we come up with these completely predictable, but it usually in social reality, it never is. It's always a game of probability. And we are very used to that actually, making these in the machines help us in seeing like what is most likely to come next. For example, been using Google for many years and uh, search engines and you type in something and there's an autocomplete and the autocomplete recommends you, well, what is about to come next? 